Well, hello there, humans of these other things, you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel Live Bushka, and this is Celtic Frost doing bad things to good people in the SU100Y. And we're going to do two things today on this video. We're going to talk about Uprising Mode, what it, what it meant to the game, and the kind of position the game's in after it. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about one of the best games I've ever seen in the FV4202. Really special game, uh, which I'm going to show you, which is pretty freaking crazy. My good man Fizzy sent that one across my desk, and it is an absolute barnstormer. Anyway, here we go. Onwards and upwards. Uh, before I go any further, there was an announcement today from Wargaming that they are going to be taking their commentators to Minsk. I wasn't in it. A lot of people have asked me, why the hell aren't you going to Minsk? The answer is basically just family. Um, it caused a whole lot of hardship this year for my missus. She's got a very, very demanding full-time job. One of the reasons we love the job that I do, which is YouTube, is that it allows us to have some flexibility in our life. And I look after Junior to drop off some pickups, coach the basketball team, all that kind of stuff. And when I go away, it just places all that squarely in her lap. And it causes an automat like a massive amount of burnout for her. She's like got 60-hour working weeks, running like 50 or 60 people in her job. and then she gets to do everything else as well. So we went away once for Blitz this year to Bovington for Tank Fest, once for PUBG Mobile to Los Angeles and just called it quits after that. I've knocked back a couple of gigs. So don't think that I've abandoned Blitz. I've just abandoned travel for the rest of the year because it's just become way too problematic. Um, now let's talk about Uprising. Uh, Family first, basically. Uh, Uprising was a massive success. It's an interesting one for me that I think for a game that has long had its roots deep inside the world of realism, uh, that this game was such an overwhelming success. And it wasn't just successful with the younger gen uh, or newer players, it was successful with everyone. And I'm talking about old souls, diehards, guys that love the tanks for what they are and their... their their ability to mimic reality at times. Uh, this was absolutely not the case, though, with, you know, Uprising. Uprising was all about craziness and gameplay. And it's the age-old adage is that it doesn't matter whether the game is perfect with graphics, it doesn't matter if it's got um, the most realistic engine or whatever. If the gaming experience is good, it'll just flat out work. And that's what Uprising was. Uprising was a fantastic experience in terms of gaming. It allowed for a whole different style within the structures of the same game. Now, Mad Games was the original first port of call with uh, that kind of craziness. But Uprising, if that Mad Games was the entree, Uprising was the main course and dessert all rolled into one over two days lying on a couch dribbling grapes into your mouth every once in a while. It was mental. Uh, and it was mental with just the most fantastic amount of giggle and hilarity involved. SU 100 wise getting 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 kills and massive damage and disappearing and going invisible and popping up behind people and the old bamboozle where a heavy tanker just switch you around and the mark of the, the Jaguar or whatever where you couldn't move and you just bleed out if you drove off and some people wouldn't notice as they were doing 70 kilometers an hour in a T95. Like it was just that kind of mental and we loved it. We loved the gameplay. I do think Wargaming are probably onto something in making this stuff periodic uh, because there's no real drive through a, a tech tree for this. It's not like you sit there and go, oh, I've got to generate experience to get to the next, you know, game experience kind of thing. The next game milestone. It's not like that at all. It's just so arcadey and fast-paced. And I loved it for that, but I do think that it, it was the kind of thing that if we had it all the time, we probably wouldn't love it quite as much. But that being the case, we loved it a lot. And I want to thank Wargaming for um, going out and experimenting and being a little bit brave with this kind of thing, because it really is a huge departure for a company that started off with World of Tanks PC as its big hit and has really relied on that. And if anyone knows anything about the, the way the company itself runs and the and the structure of it, they know that this is a real adventure. It's a, they're, they're kind of like little fiefdoms within there. And this is, this is for Blitz, I think, a, a huge success. And I hope that it uh, continues to be so. The second thing we're going to talk about here is a game in the FE4202. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. But I want to talk about that game particularly before we get to it because it, it was 
a fantastic game. No bones about it. But it was one of those brilliant games where FV things happened. Uh, it's chock full of Hesh and Hesh goodness, and that's fair enough. But what it also was chock full of was uh, moments where the Hesh did little to no damage or just didn't hit at all or, you know, tanks drove in front of other tanks and all that kind of thing. And, then, and at the end of the game, it was one with just real aggression and it showcased something about Hesh that is absolutely special and that's its ability to do just massive amounts of damage in short periods if you're willing to hit point trade. And we'll get to that in just a wee short while as we uh, jump onto Castilla with the FV4202 here and you can see the T54 at the top is going to completely expose himself, not get shot and just block a bunch of shots at the very start of the game because he's got five degrees of gun depression, that T54. You can see he gets the guy going across the bridge in the object 140 once. He's spotted, but he's going to drive forward anyway and just block the shot. Not get hit by the grill that's just sitting up there uh, while everyone else is spotted. The grill doesn't even look at him. This bloke goes out, misses. That doesn't go anywhere, but inside the T-54's front wheel block. So he aims up again. That mystery, absolute mystery. Looked like it landed behind the grill. Like uh, At that point, you're like, yeah, typical FE-4202. Just... It's either all win or all loss. So he tries his hand with a crazy shot. Reversing up the hill for a really good angle here on the E75. Gets it. Lands it. Because the gun dipped, it hit the bottom part. Probably hit a bit of track. 90 damage. We've got three shots fired for 90 damage. Typical freaking FV4202. And this is what I've always adored about this tank is... It is such a crazy tank when it goes right and such a mediocre tank when it goes nowhere. And that's one of the reasons why Blitz has always had issues with the FE-422 from a balance perspective. So that's now 172 damage. There's another horrible shot. Um, this is a tank that originally had a gun that, I mean, they, when it got buffed, it got, I mean, look at this. This is just... Everything that could go wrong is going wrong. This is not the way you, you're hoping for. And then suddenly, 452 into the turret of another medium with a medium tank. And you're like, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good tank. <laughs> it's so funny, this tank. Like, it could just be so many different tanks all wrapped up in one. Spotted again, looking for the IS-7, needs the APCR, switch to that. Smart decision, makes you swap ammo, pulling back. Just gets a lovely bounce on the top of that super slick butter knife like upper glacis. Pokes another one, 380. Nice high roll with the APCR. Looking good here from the top of Steer. And there is the object 140 looking to punch across. Doing a no scope, trying a no scope a la Labushka and getting punished for it. And so he should because it's not really the kind of look you're after. Still knocks another one right in the top of the turret. And all we're doing here is hit point trading. Now he's trying to get a bounce. Doesn't get a bounce again, and it's just hit point trading. Now, at least he's traded the 140 down to very, very low numbers with the possibility of clearing it with a hash round. Then the grill decides to get amorous and glamorous. Another no scoper and gets 377. Doesn't stop moving, though. Making life tough on the grill. The grill has just fired. He's on a reload. So he's pulling back to get some hard cover and looking for a little bit of love as he rolls forward. Now, he's going to be aggressive. He's looking at the scoreboard. You're thinking, the grill's thinking i got to get some damage out there, but that's a full roll. 550 and not an easy one to cover. And now the grill's decided to double down on a bad idea. Suddenly it's gone from 6 to 2 to 5 to 2 with a potential 4 to 2 if we can just squeeze an APCR round into the top of this object. Now it's nearly worth going out here. Very tempting to go out and just make the trade and clear it. But does a good job of not doing that. Resets, pulls up and then gets the shot on an angle as the object rolls forward. Four to one now as the E75 eats the big one. Plenty of hit points left on the table, but now the shots are starting to go in. This is the regression to the mean that we love with the 4202. When it all starts to work, you look like a genius, and it is all starting to sing. Uh, but there are a couple of tanks left. Now, the key here is there is... A lot of tank left that can be penned by Hesh. The Object 140 is filthy. Kill this MF, please. What a lovely human being. 422 is actually pretty nimble, and it climbs up there. It's got gun depression. Not a lot of turret armor, but if you can get the gun depression working, it can certainly get that turret armor working, and I love this move. 
That is a lovely move. Gorgeous move from our amigo as he rocks and rolls, or she rocks and rolls. Not sure. Called Miss Sassy. Could be boy, could be girl, could be whatever the hell they want to be. It doesn't worry me at all. And the 140 is now filthy. Absolutely filthy. Winston Churchill. They shall fight them on the beaches. They shall fight them in the kill this MFR. Ah, oh, we're looking for bad things from good people, and that is a tough gig. But he hasn't been spotted because obviously it's a medium tank versus a heavy tank, and the heavy tank spotting range is just a little bit shorter. Not so with the Waffle McTractor that's got an eyeball on him over there. Still, if there's one tank you want to see in this tank that is a TD, it is the Waffle Tractor. Uh, and he's paying for damage over distance. I love a tracking shot here goes for it but doesn't get the track but does get very very lucky drawing that shot in he's got to get past the waffle a max roll and he is behind him baby can you dig your man get up that hill big boy great move here as he drives through the carcasses behind making the seven uh the object 704 go to a very poor position and rather than running away he stays to fight now low roll but have a look at the timer one minute he's not going for the draw he is 100 percent going for the win smashing hash rounds into the top of that 704 the moisture gets a nice shot from further away but that means he's on a reload and it gives him an opportunity to get right in the grill, no pun intended, of the 704. He's going to use the other Moistune's uh, turret as his guard there. Now, look, 38 seconds. Remember how I told you about if you're willing to hit point trade in a 4202, you can do massive things? These are the massive things I'm talking about. Look at the damage pile on here from a tier 10 medium. Luckiest bounce of the week goes to this guy. Look at the Hesh rounds come singing in like a choir as they bring this grub home. Forwards, backwards, one to go. He's beaten the reload. Hesh will do it, baby. Hope you guys enjoyed that replay. That was amazing. Nearly 9K damage from Miss Sassy. Hats off, amigo. You're the real MVP. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I fist pumped in real life the first time I watched that. I literally went, yes. I was just praying for that clutch bounce. Look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.